What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to On Air with your one and only rock star the Mike David Dwayne, the throwback millennial, the narrator, curator, all that dope stuff. What's really good? Happy Tuesday to you guys. I know you guys have been waiting all weekend. Listen, first of all, I hope you guys have been staying well, safe during these times, and y'all had a great weekend. Y'all was safe. Y'all, y'all couldn't wait until we got back here to Tuesday, right? Tuesday, 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 yes. It is May 18th, 2021. Oh my goodness, guys. We are still here. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to everybody who's tuning into the show right now. And shout out to everybody who tuned into our show last week with Lorianne Gibson and Vito. Oh my goodness. Because y'all know, oh my goodness is like my signature like tagline. You know, it stops me from saying ums and uhs and all that other dope stuff. But I'm so glad that we're, we're still joined here today and everything. Listen. If I had to be honest, the last two weeks have been so, 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 so difficult. From my birthday week on until last week, I've been totally out of it. So I'm finally back into the groove. We've got some new technology. So I know y'all are seeing the the clearness going on. We didn't didn't step some things up a little bit in the world of On Air with Davidson Wayne. And I'm really excited about tonight because tonight we have three-time Grammy Award nominated singer-songwriter Ajian and recording artist... And actor Titus Macon, oh my goodness. Now, if you guys don't know who Titus is, first of all, he's got this Butterfly Ali project that comes out on June 11th, Friday, June 11th. It's called Preacher's Kid. It's his brand new EP that he's getting ready to drop. And he also plays Jackson West on ABC's The Rookie. I know you guys have been watching The Rookie. I know we got some rookie fans watching us live tonight. So we're going to be talking to Titus and then Ajian, like I said, Grammy Award not named songwriter. You guys know her for her Love Train series. Uh, Love Train 1 that came out in 2017. Love Train 2 that came out in 2019. And then the interlude that came out earlier this year in January. And then also the orchestra performance of the project came out this March. And it's got some dope videos. I'm so excited to be speaking to these two amazing, talented people. Because Ajian, she's so dope. <sighs> Titus, he's so dope, he's so funny, but listen, when you guys see these interviews and these conversations, you're going to be like, yo, David, you done found, you done found your new tribe of friends in this thing. Yes, I did, y'all. They are so dope, so make sure that you guys keep it locked. Also, tonight, we're going to be talking entertainment news, and we're talking Dear Dwayne. We're talking from Milano to J. Cole to Migos to Nicki Minaj's back with the Beam Up Scotty. Mixtape on digital platforms? What? Yes. Into also Ariana Grande getting married to Dalton Gomez. Oh my goodness. Yes. We got all that stuff. And Dear Dwayne, domestic violence is our main topic of discussion when it comes to Dear Dwayne. So I had one of my good listeners who has been tuned in for like a long time since, wow, since I'm going to say like 2017, since we first started connecting with Seven Street or our good friend who's got that amazing single Guilty featuring Chris Brown and ASAP Ferg. If you guys have not checked it out, you guys need to check it out. And you guys will be singing an interview with uh, Seven literally in three weeks for episode seven. Ain't that dope how that works out? Seven said it ain't no coincidence and that happened in the way that it did. But girl, Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about a whole lot of things. But yes, domestic violence is definitely something we're talking about doing, Dear Dwayne. It is such a big, 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 big thing that happens in relationships. All the time that we see that it's such an unfortunate thing, we are still in the month of mental health month. So guys, you know, when domestic violence does occur in your relationships or relationships with people that you know, it plays on their mental. So we're going to get into what, like I said, such a, such a very close to home topic and stuff like that. So I hope you guys who have, you know, if you're going through this, that you guys take the advice or if you guys know somebody, please share this with them as well tonight. So yes, let's get into our first interview with Titus Macon right now. Like I said, he plays Jackson West on The Rookie and he's got that brand new EP called Preacher's Kid coming out June 11th. So make sure that you guys stay right here. We're going to get into the interview right now. Yo, it's Titus Macon, a.k.a. Butterfly Lee, and you checking out my boy, David Dwayne. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning back into On Air with the one and only rock star on the mic. Your throwback millennial, your everything that, you know, just narrator, curator, David Dwayne in the place to be. Right now, we've got our boy, your boy, my boy, Titus Macon. Now, if you guys don't know who Titus is, he's a part of the 
amazing show on ABC, The Rookie. And he's got some dope music that if you guys don't know, you need to know, you need to check out. And uh, he's joined with us. What's going on, Titus? What up, fam? What's poppin'? We had a nice little conversation that was like technically like the whole interview. <laughs> we already done. I hope y'all liked it. Yeah, no, like, look, they're gonna see the, they're gonna see it in, in some bloopers though. But let me say right, nice. first of all, congratulations on your success um, thus far mm-hmm. in your career. Thirty one. You don't even look thirty one. And and the thing is, like you doing dope things. Come on, look. Tell them that we can do it. Look, look, look. I'm just honored to be in the spaces that are allowing me to do it. You see? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good thing. So when you think about the spaces that are allowing you to be a part of these different projects that, you, that you've that you been a part of, also uh-huh. acting and music and stuff like that, how does that feel, you know, when you just kind of put everything into perspective? I mean, if we want to get deep, it feels like we've come a long way. There's a lot, lot, lot further to go. It's, it feels it feels nice. I mean, we, we were talking about it just a second ago, um, not, not with you, but with another castmate. And we were talking about, look at here, like, Oh, I know what we're talking about. The fact that the billboard in Canada for the show, my friend sent me a picture of it. And there's just three black leads up there on one show. And there's only two Caucasian. And then there's a Hispanic and an Asian. And I was like, I would say that's some progression. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, the fact that they're even willing to use our faces and, and to promote a show with three black faces, an Asian and a Hispanic, I'm pretty proud. I'm pretty proud of that progression. But as far as the spaces that I'm in, when it comes to music and acting and all that stuff, once again, it's just one of those things that it, it really just makes you appreciate that you're, you they're willing to hear you. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's a good thing that you actually touched on what you touched on. Just the the fact of diversity mm-hmm. in times. You know, we we're seeing a lot of crazy stuff going on, and even the show. This, seat, this current season of The Rookie really touches on what we're experiencing as a culture, what happens, things like that. And I know that you were so advocate for that. It was like, look, this needs to be a part of what's happening or else I ain't going to be into what's happening at all. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you definitely said it a lot more up front than I was said. <laughs> I, mean, I said the same thing. But I said it and, you know, keep in mind, I was still approaching my boss. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, that was exactly it. I, I approached him. I was like, can I just share my heart with you and where I'm at right now? And I was honestly very emotional in the moment. And I was like, look, I realize that this is a conversation that can get people in trouble, get people fired or whatever. This is where I'm at. And I hope that you can understand and hear my heart based on where things are going on. I don't feel like it's a story I'm excited to tell if we're not addressing the reality. If yeah. we're not really going to touch on the fact that I am playing a young African American gay officer, police officer. I was like, we got a lot of points here that we've been glazing over. And the one, one I was mainly attacking because they have addressed that I was a gay officer before in the past. But the one that, I, that they, we haven't seen until now really address is racial injustice, police brutality, things like that. And it's things that I've been concerned about from the beginning, mind you. And I, and, I, and, I, and I told the showrunner that, and I was like, this is from the beginning. I was always had a concern with playing a cop for the reason of not doing it in the right light to the sense where it's like making it look pretty and yeah. not real. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, right. Anyway, but yeah. Thanks, thankful to him for hearing me. And it was something they were planning to do already. And it just lined up and now we're doing it. Wow. And it's good that the stars align. And, and, it, and, it, and it is important because that certain key things, episode after episode, season after season, year after year, and within the storyline, it starts to build out and people start to understand it more because you can't just gloss over certain things. Yeah, no, 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 it deserves a flush out. And I'm happy that it have been taking the first half of the season to give it some time to give some, have some attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. How have you been feeling about, you know, just everything that's been going on? Because it's a lot. I know it's been, it's been a lot for me. Some days it's exhausting as fuck. And mm-hmm. I would like that to be black and then to be a black man, just kind of like just seeing what's going on. And it's just like a continuation. I mean, it's been happening, but it's starting to hit us a little bit different because we're seeing 
young men that look just like us. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, I one, I agree with you. It It is exhausting in a different way. And like you said, it's something when I talk to my friends, uh, friends who aren't African-American, um, especially, that, that's exactly how I explain it. I'm like, keep in mind, this is something that's always been happening. What, in my opinion, what has changed it now is an iPhone. The fact that everybody's getting to see it for themselves and it's not just word of mouth. It's not just like, oh, because back in the day, I had so many people be like, oh, well, you said the N word. Does that actually happen? Do people really say it? I'm like, yeah, bro, it happens. And it's kind of like hearsay, you know what I mean? But now that you can see it for yourself, you can go look at the videos. All these people can see it happening in live time. It's, it's creating new conversations. I'm thankful for it, to be honest, because it, you know, it's a, it's an awakening moment. It's a, a woke time for a lot of people, including mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. It, it woke me up enough to say something to my showrunner, you know? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a woke time. And I think that people are starting to read the room. Re I better. That's, it. that's it. Honestly, that's, and that's, yeah. yeah. I feel like that's all we're really asking. I'll speak for myself. I feel like that's all I'm really asking is like, I'm not asking you to live a certain way. Because regardless, I know that we're never going to get to a place where everybody's thinking the same and everybody's perfectly just accepting of everyone. Yeah, it's not reality. But if we can just read the room and understand and respect the fact that people have different walks, people have different journeys and don't deserve to be judged for any of that. And especially something that you can't change, like the skin color or like how you feel read the room and just keep your mouth shut. If you feel, if you don't like me because of my skin color, that's something you can feel that's between you and God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth though. And yeah. people have to be able to, you know, be honest with themselves. Can, can I rock with this? Can I not? Mm -hmm. And be able to be like, okay, I can't let me fall back. It ain't no shade, but just be able to, Read, shoot, yeah. be aware of your surroundings of yourself first and then read the room. Yeah. yeah. Self-awareness is everything. Everything. And I'm still working on it myself, but I'm happy that these conversations make, allow everybody to start working on it, you know? No, I definitely am glad that they do too. So your role as Jackson, like how, how much of his character to you did you have to really dive into? Where do you, where do you feel like you guys similar? So... A lot of people don't know this, but quite honestly, I would say about 5% we relate on. So what happened was the whole uh, casting process with the role, initially, people that watch the show would know a character named Tim, and Tim is like this kind of like, kind of badass, kind of like more arrogant cop. And my character was initially like Tim. Like I was like kind of cocky and I came in there. I was like, my dad is, you know, commander of eternal affairs. Like what y'all really going to do? Like in the whole casting process, I was kind of had this air to me and I was going to get humbled throughout the season. And then on the first day of filming, they flipped it and they were like, look, we're going to 180 the character. We don't want him to step on toes. We want him to be confident, but like in a more, I respect my authorities way. Anyway, it was all these notes that came from it. So it, it kind of flipped. The first guy was a lot more, actually, who Jackson is this season is a lot closer to me, but who he's been before, like, I'm the type that's like, you better say something. You know what I mean? And Jackson's yeah. more like, okay, let me be careful of who and what and so on and so forth. And like, oh, I don't want to do anything wrong. And I'm like, it might be wrong, but we're going to find out after I say something. <laughs> um, like, that's more me. So we don't line up and how we handle things, um, but we line up in like a way of being goal oriented, knowing what we want and like going for it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And let's yeah. talk about the importance of knowing what you want and going for it. Cause acting, mm -hmm. you went for this, music, you went for it with your uh, Butterfly Ali yeah. project and stuff like that. Let's just talk, let's just switch gears and, 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 and talk about that, but also, you know, really, you know, address the music aspect as well too and just getting into that goal-oriented yeah. mind state. Yeah, I mean, with that, I like what I was telling you before we started the, the, the first interview before the interview, <laughs> 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 huh? I, uh, I uh, started the music, right? So for me, 
I always knew I wanted to sing and, and dance. And my sister was the actress and uh, she went to school for it. And then I don't know what it was for me. It was a combination of, of my sister, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and a movie called Step Up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I saw that and I was like, wait, there's a school where I can like. Kids. No, Step Up with Channing Tatum and them. Yeah, I said when we was little kids. Oh, I just said with the little kids, the movie with the little kids. Not, not, not with the little kids. Well, when we was little kids. Honey. Honey had the little kids. Honey had the little kids. That was, <laughs> there we I go. Love me some honey, boy. There we go. Uh, that, that was a great one, too. Yeah, it was a great one. Uh, but when I watch it now, I was like, oh, it wasn't hitting like I thought it was, but it still go hard. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I, 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 I saw those things and I was like, oh, wait. I didn't, I didn't know that there was a space where I could do all of those interests. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, Step Up was like, I can go to school where I can sing, dance, and act. Oh, and then Glee was stuff like Glee. Well, that came out later. But shows like Glee and movies like Fame and all that stuff. I was like, well, wait, there's a world that exists where I can be on camera, sing, and dance, but also be pursuing my music. The world opened up to me. So I honestly just started swinging at all of them. I stuck with music. Music's never left. Although acting technically took off first. Right. Singing's always been there. I've always been recording. Um, I used to release music under my name and then I pulled all that. And when yeah, I, started, I was wondering about that because that's mm-hmm. initially how I, I know you to be, you know, Titus was doing the music and then the acting. And then I went back earlier and said, I said, where the heck is this damn music at? Yeah. So I, I took that stuff down because I, I, started realizing that folks weren't um just it was for my personal reason but also because uh, I, I realized that people unfortunately can't detach as i i gave them more credit than they should have than i should have because yeah. they'd be like, oh wait so wait this is you but then like you're a cop too and it's like no i'm not actually a cop you know what i mean like you forget that people attached to who they want you to be based on how what shows they watch you on and i was like okay I just need to pull my little Donald Glover together here and give you my music, which is ironically enough, people attach Titus making to the roles that aren't me because I'm playing pretend. So they uh, associate my actual self with fake people. And then the fake name is actually who I really am, which is bizarre. Do you know what I mean? So if you listen to my music and see how I am in videos or how I present myself fashionably or yeah. all that stuff, that all comes out of my music. So if you really want to know who I am, check out Butterfly Lee. Yeah. But if you want to, they need to. Oh, thank you. Look, um, yeah, and yeah, if you want to see, that I'm... is so dope. Because look, I got, I had I had to get my little track listing even with the videos pulled up right here. Like even with the the five minutes video, like what? Come on, come Black on. Egg. And right now, even this, this is Jackson West. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Haircut from the shave face. And it's like, so it's tricky for people. So I give them, you know, that I'm not, I don't it's separate a, them. It's a persona. It, it's a, sure, I view it as honestly an, ex, I guess persona, but like an expression yeah. of my art. Like, almost like I, I, I album titled my entire career musically yeah. you know what i mean like this you're is just them, yeah because yeah. you're giving them both sides so when right. they look at you as an artist this is what they'll, they'll see the difference with you as an actor do you find it very difficult for people to just really hone in to both or or has that been something that it's kind of like easy because when you make that separation it's kind of like okay they they understand what it is this way No, I actually feel like it's been pretty split. The great thing is people that follow me do appreciate both. Right. Uh, It's just so drastically different that, you you know, you either appreciate both, but you're a little more heavy, like, I come to you because I love the show. Or you're like, yo, I I love your music. Oh, you act too, that's cool. But like your music goes on. So it's like, honestly, I appreciate both. And it's like, I have to clarify to people, it's like, this is not an alter ego. It's not like a Sasha Fierce where I go to that to have confidence. And, and it's more like, no, 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 this is the actual me. Like Butterfly Lee is legit this, this is what I'm doing, doing. Right. Like if I would have come into the acting game different and done roles that were, you know, where I, my hair was grown out and not facial hair and I was more eclectic, then I would have been, oh no, those roles really do reflect kind of who I am but I came in more in a less suited booted way, you know? Right. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I wanted to ask you, because there's a lot of times where there are like Jacob Lattimore, like Lou James, like that. These are, these are R and B singers. These are like, you know, you do music as well. So you guys are singers. The problem is people would like to forget that they have music. Right. See, and, 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 we, gotta, and we gotta stop that because you know, the biggest thing is it's happening with our black men more than anything else. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's for heartbreaking sure. because you guys put in extra, extra hard work. Same thing with algae. They, they, yeah. they, he does me too. Algae's that's been true. dope. Yeah, that's Algie, true. Let them know. I forget myself that Algae does music. That's actually funny. Yeah. 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 Yep. Y'all really do. Mm-hmm. You got some great talent out there. Some great talent. But we're trying to bridge the gap. We're trying to bridge the gap. Open the door up. Get more of them actor singers out there because it's like, yo. Right. Like y'all are present. Like y'all 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 ain't, y'all ain't being forgotten. But- and honestly, Donna, I mean, lots of people, obviously, we go take it back, Elton Kuj to Will Smiths to so on and so forth. But as far as like our generation, my generation, I guess probably people are younger than me. But my generation, Donald Glover. They mix they mix generation. Right. Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, that whole that whole situation has has honestly been paving uh a a, a really awesome path for my generation. Although it's been done multiple times before, you know. Yeah. yeah. And of course it's it's different between every generation and people look at it right. in a different way. So what was it about the black uh butterfly Ali name that just kind of made you gravitate towards that because that's why I'm loving the branding side of that too. Because when I see names like that, I'm like, there's a story there. So there what is, was yeah. that story? Yeah, I had a, so I was writing all this music, this new music, and I was like, I don't want people to attach Pretty Little Liars, Glee, Rookie to this. Like, it, it's not that, it's like my actual self. So I was writing a song that, I wrote the lyric, which is a quote from Muhammad Ali, Mm -hmm. flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And it's in the song that I haven't released. I said I haven't released, but I wrote it like a year and a half, two years ago. And um, I was like, okay. And I was looking for titles for the song. And I was like, it's not about Ali. I was like, I got to honor Ali. So it's like, I'm not trying to take his words. I wanted to know that I'm like honoring his words, his like uh, quote. And so I was like, okay, okay. And I was like, what about... Mr. Ali. And I was like, nah, 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 but anyway, it came down to where I was like, oh, Butterfly Ali, that's a cool title. And then I sat on it and I was like, yo, Butterfly Ali just, I was like, should that be like my album title, EP title? And I was like, that kind of just feels like me. Like, I'm like, I'm underestimated because like butterflies, it's like, oh, you're bubbly, you're fun, no, no, no. But it's like, hold on now, the bad boys over the wings, they can defend. You know what I mean? Like, it's beautiful, <laughs> but like. True. Don't act like we ain't warriors out here. And it's like, I felt like that uh-huh. That explained my personality well. And it's like just the Ali of it all, just like, it just came together really cool. So it honestly all stemmed from me quoting Muhammad Ali and putting Butterfly in the song and explaining why I was a butterfly, to be honest. This, yeah, the song talks about me it was feeling like a butterfly. Feeling like a bee. <laughs> <laughs> and that's close to how it goes, but not exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it. That's I like it. that. Come on, Titus Dang. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I rolled with it, and here we are today, Butterfly Lee. Yeah, but that's dope. I love, I love it. And I was curious, like, what? I was like, what is the story behind this? Because there's all, so every name that is a standout name, that there's always a story behind it. Yeah. And I recognize it's one of the names that you'd be like, even if I heard it, I'd be like, I'm sorry, who? But you talking about Butterfly Ali, you say. But it's one of them names that I feel like once you're forced to hear it, yeah. you just accept it. Childish Gambino, I first heard that, and I was like, the what? A uh, Gambino, what, a childish one? What do you mean? <laughs> but now it's fly. <laughs> the weekend, when the weekend came out, tell me you wasn't like, the weekend. You know what I mean? Especially with the spelling being different, too. Exactly. But it was like... And Lizzo, all these names, when you hear them, you're like... But then you accept it, and it's like, oh, no, that's Lizzo. SZA. <laughs> SZA. You know what I'm saying? So I just roll with it because I'm like, people will, they'll catch up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's dope. And with people catching up, what have been, like, the songs from the uh, from your catalog, which you say that people absolutely, like, love the most, that you are constantly receiving that fan love from? 
Yeah, I mean, people always love a good up-tempo bop. You know what I'm saying? They always like to have something to dance to. So I always get a response from predominantly righteous in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Those two, typically what I hear is like, people will say, yo, my favorite song is Rose, but I love Righteous. Or like, they'll be like, yo, yo, Rose is my vibe. It's on my little playlist. And yo, I'll be working out to five. You know what I mean? So like, I, I, I'd probably say overall, overall throughout time, I would say Righteous. Five minutes is like the most relevant because it's like one of the newer ones, but I would probably say Righteous was like the one that people were like, okay, okay, hey, hey, you know, first really getting the bop to butterfly. No, but that's, that's great that uh, your fans have figured out which are their favorites and it, those being like the top three, top four. Right. And I, the fans don't be known. They be like, I like this song, this song, this song, this song, this song, this song, this song. But for them to be able to hone in and say, these are my jams. Yeah. That's awesome. And I love taking that feedback. You know what I mean? Like, I still like to create in my own space and do what I want to do. But I love listening to that. And I'm like, okay, I hear that. And I and I see what y'all rocking with. You know what I mean? Like, I'll give you a little bit of that again. But, um, you know, maybe a different way, but same thing. So what does creating look like in this time for you? Are you creating at home? Are you creating in a studio? You know, what is, is the process still the same before, you know, the pandemic? Or is it still the same? It's completely different. Um, I still, I go to a different studio because now that while we're filming the show, I have to be around COVID tested people because obviously. Um, so what I'll do is I'll Zoom session with the producer. We'll get stuff going, get to a place that we're happy with production wise. They'll send me the track. Um, and then I'll go record my vocals at my friend's little living room. Well, it's not living room. He has it hooked up, but his house studio yeah. and um, send all the vocals back to the producer. They'll put everything in. I'll do anything. Go back to the studio. Yeah. When normally I would go to the studio, do all that in like one or two sessions. But now we just do a back and forth thing. And then we. Yeah, it's safer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. All this craziness. Yeah. And we, and we talked about filming, too, like how it, it, you know, with all the COVID tests like that. Let's kind of tell our viewers like that, our fans, as, as we will, about that process, like how critical it that like being on set and filming and making sure like everybody is good because they don't know that there's a lot that, you know, th these productions yeah. are really taking time into that. Sometimes the schedule gets pushed back yeah, like for some time, for weeks. And I know that that's what's been going on like with you guys as well too. Like it's been a very looked at situation. I mean, everybody's taking this very serious in the world of music and entertainment for sure, for sure. Yeah, they put a lot of work into it. I mean, we get tested three times a week. We uh, do rapid tests even in between those days. Um, yeah, it's, it's masks and shields. We got little tents that we zip up in in between. Like it's like these clear kind of like bubble tents that we can sit in and eat, you know what I mean? Like. There's a lot, there's a lot, but I, mean, I, I know that our set are one of the few sets that do the temps, but um, they, they definitely are trying their best to uh, keep us as safe as possible. So I appreciate that, you know? Yeah, no, that's a good thing. Yeah. Got to. And, yeah. you, and how much like with filming, like, do, would you say like the anxiety with knowing all of this going on, it, it just, it's more like it's present versus not being present. Like, how, like, I mean, obviously, you're stepping out of the house, so then you know you got right. you to get get this bag and, and, do, and you know deliver this amazing show. <laughs> Titus, you know I'm blunt. Look, I don't even care. <laughs> look, you and me. Look, you can you got the right one. You know what I'm saying? You can, I'm like, look, because I, I know that the whole coin that can be like, oh my gosh, and it still has. I mean, for anybody, it's like, oh my gosh, but you know, to really for what that is, yeah, it's like it's a different type of feeling. It started off that way for sure. Like, like when we started shooting the season, it played a big factor in like comfort. Like it's, it's bizarre because you want to focus on what you're doing, but then you're like, yo, I'm acting with this person. We getting real close. Like, should I be worried? But no, they tested. Okay. And then you're like, okay, but everybody else, I'm on a set with about a hundred some odd people. And you're like, okay, who? And so you, you, for a while, you're thinking all those things while trying to just, connect on camera um but then after a while it's it's honestly sadly kind of becoming normal 
And like, I, we're pretty used to it now. It's like, okay, they're about to call action, take off all your stuff. And then mask and stuff. And then um, now you just kind of do it. Now it's just kind of the new normal. Yeah. I hope it doesn't stick, but you know, yeah. The new norm that will be faded soon enough. Lord's willing. Look, mm -hmm. your mouth, God's ears, come on. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what else are you, um, have you been like working on too? Like outside of like music and film, have you been able to get into any other things? during the, these times too, or just been focused on that? No, I mean, everything's been pretty related to those two. I mean, the most is I've been working on merch for Butterfly Ali, but that's still, you know, music stuff. But uh, other than that, I not only, typically is it already time consuming to be on set and then go to studio, then go to set, go to studio. Wow. But on top of that, now anywhere else you go, people have to be tested or you have to stay home. So it like confines everything even more. So you, there's a small amount of time, but then there's even in the windows that I did have, I kind of can't do anything with that much. Do you know what I mean? Right, right, right. But yeah, we may definitely making the most. Yeah, there's definitely a tight timing that you have to be able to do any other thing, especially, right. with, you know, next Right, time. I pretty much focus on my music and acting and make sure I'm, I'm giving all I can to both of those for sure. Oh, that's amazing. And like I said, you've been doing a great job. So congratulations Thank you. on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got to ask you because we asked uh -huh. all our guests this question. Uh -huh. What do you say it exemplifies you as a person, as a man, uh -huh. an actor, and an artist? Ooh, okay. Let's go with man. I mean, it sounds a little, what's it called? Arrogant. <laughs> Uh, I would probably say my honesty. Um, I look for that in people when somebody can just, I like when people are willing to relate to other people. It's like, no, no, no. You can think what you want of me, but if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an answer because I don't know whose heart I'm healing or who I'm helping. So the more honest you can be, the more people you can affect, in my opinion. And I'm like, just, just be honest, like, they'll figure it out. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, so for as a man, that, and then what were the other two? As a, um, as an artist and then an actor as well. Yeah, so as a musician, ooh, this is actually tricky. This is good, I don't get stumped very often, <laughs> that's good. I would say, I wanna say the same thing. I'm trying to find a different answer for you. That's what Well, I'm you can say, you, do you, you wanna say the same thing? I do only because I I feel like within my music, what I'm really trying to hone in on and 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 honor is who I honestly am. So if I feel like being quirkier, if I feel like being um, with like someone would pray for him, if I feel like like telling you how what, where my heart is with something, like I don't I don't like feeling bound uh, to like trying to be cool, trying to be sexy, trying to be like whatever that is. Um, and I've always looked to artists like the Andre 3000s and the Pharrells and the and all these people who are a little more, I call it left of center when it comes to like R&B um, yeah. or soul music or funk, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, I would consider the same word, honesty, um, honest, who I really am. And then as an actor, that's hard because I'm always playing pretend. So I don't really know. <laughs> um, um, as an actor, Half the interview is going to be me thinking of this answer. <laughs> I don't know. The quality is, for me overall is my truth as to who I am and what I stand for as a person, which for me is my relationship with God. Uh, um, but seriously, though, because that's a through line for my entire career for who I am and what I honor, how I love, from what roles I play to what songs I make to how I communicate with you, like the, all of that is all rooted in my faith. So that's the overall. Well, that's, that's the message in the word. Okay. On, on, on period and Mary had a little lamb in it and everything. Hey, hey, hey. Let him know. Point, period. Because <laughs> he is the reason for the season. And, and, hey. and I think that faith is always something that will always keep us going. And I'm a strong believer. So thank, you. thank you, Jesus. Thank yeah. You so <laughs> yeah, I love it. And, and, and that you, and you said that too. 
You said what? I said it's a good thing you said it because it's all about credit where it's due. We got to give them all the glory. I mean, I physically can't credit anything else. Like, it's like I, I personally, and I understand that everybody has different beliefs, all these oh, things, yeah. and you're entitled to feel, feel, believe what you want. For me, I'm like, I know for a fact with my journey and my story, I ain't do it by myself. And sorry, but I'll credit due. Yeah. And you've had, and you've had an amazing journey. It's been, it's been a good one. It's been a nice little uphill. It's a slow incline, you know? Hey, guess what? Slow incline is all is always room for more improvement. Even, even when you're always at the top, 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 look, that's true. They got, work, they got work to do. We all have work to do, but it, it's good that we were able to have this conversation. Cause like I said, I had followed you even for, prior to this interview. And I was like, I gotta get, I gotta get it. Hold the titles. I don't know how. So like that. Cause I don't think I even seen any info on your Instagram, but I was like, he's so dope. He's doing good things in the Thank acting space. He's doing great things in the music space. And, you. and your story yeah. is what people need to tap into. And they need to, you know, check out the music. From the yeah. and they need to just get into this acting, all the acting projects that you've got going on. Are you do you have any other projects that are coming up as any music or acting? I know you mentioned the merch, but is there anything that else coming out this year? Yeah, so music wise, uh, acting obviously more episodes of The Rookie. We got the whole season to go, I think only episode four up to four has aired so far. Um, and then music side, yes, uh, releasing a single. Next month, by the end of next month, Ooh. or early March, one of those. And then the EP comes right after that, about a month or so after that, releasing the EP that the single will be from. Oh, and, so tell us um, about the, uh, the single and yeah. the EP. Give us, give us a little some some. Yeah. So, um, I, mean, I mean, this is the first EP I'll be releasing as Butterfly Ali. So um, it'll be all that. I mean, uh, pray for him is also from that EP. Okay. So you get an organic, real, who Titus Butterfly Ali is, and it's gonna be fun. It's, it, it'll, it'll take y'all over the place. I, I use the EP to, as my diary of sorts, where it's like, all right, let me tell y'all how I feel about each of these topics. Each song attacks a different topic. This is how I feel, like Pray For Him, you saw a little bit more how I felt about when it comes to uh, police brutality or racial injustice, it was kind of my speech on that, like how I felt about that, where I was with that. There's another song that honestly is about politics that if it, it'll be interesting for you to listen through it to see what I'm really saying. Um, and then there's another one that's just um, a bop that's about the struggle of life. Like anything that I've been feeling this season of life, I put into each song and kind of like masked it for people to like kind of apply how they feel as well, apply it to their own lives. But you know, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You say that's like around like March. I would say the EP is probably closer to about April world, April. but the single is uh, late February, early March. Let it be April so it can be close to my birthday. Hey, that's what we aiming for. What's your birthday? Uh, 27th. I, yeah, honestly, that's not a bad time zone. So you might be right around <laughs> your birthday. <laughs> you see? <laughs> right, right in the uh, little middle of the spring. Shoot. Uh. Yeah, you can have all the Valentine's Day music. And it, well, they don't have no leprechaun music. Well, there ain't no Valentine's Day music. I feel like love songs are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Titus, let everybody know where they can follow you, like, as far as, like, social media is concerned, you know, where they can stream the music as well, too, because, like I said, they got to tap in and, you know, let them know, you know, where they can catch uh, the rookie as well. Absolutely. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, at Titus Macon, Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming platforms, Butterfly Ali, um, and then, uh, what's it called, the rookie, Hulu, if you miss it, if you're not watching it on actual live TV, you can watch it on Hulu the next day. All the episodes are there. And uh, if you don't have that, uh, I'm pretty sure you can watch it on ABC Go. All right, you guys. And that was our interview with Titus Macon. Yes, you guys got to check out Titus on ABC's The Rookie. And make sure that you guys check out his new project that comes out 
on June 11th, The Preacher's Kid, the brand new EP. Butterfly Ali is the name that he goes under with this project. Hold on, y'all. I got to scratch my damn head for a second. Woo! It's getting hot. You know why? Because we got so much entertainment news that we must talk about this evening. So, Milano officially announces that her brand new stage name is Lotto. Also, she uh, unveils the new stage name with what seems to be artwork for a brand new single, or maybe it's a project. We don't really know what it is, but it comes out this Friday, and it's called The Biggest. Oh, Lotto, we ready, girl. We ready, Lotto. And it's Lotto season that she said following that post on social media. And then not only that, but last week that she gave us a video post and that said new money bag, new house with garden, new whip, new name. I'm still that bitch. Y'all ready? Milano, we ready. You've been our girl since back in the rap game days. We got to actually repost that interview because we did an interview with Milano way back in the day and stuff like that. And she has just been incredible. Her whole entire career has just been dope. So shout outs to her. Absolutely proud of the young lady. Also, J. Cole finally dropped that brand new album, The Off Season, his highly anticipated sixth album. And prior to the release of the album, he released a documentary called Applying Pressure, right? So this last week was, and this week has been the week for J. Cole. This is a great time to be J. Cole, okay? He recently signed to the Basketball African League's Patriots. And on Sunday, he made his debut playing with the team. So this is real dope. You know, Cole is doing dope things. Not only did he make a debut on Sunday, but but yesterday on Monday, right? He dropped a brand new video for Amari, the track that's on this brand new album. Oh my goodness. And you can see Cole suited up, revisiting his college dorm. I mean, look. All this J. Cole madness, I know all the fans have been waiting. I'm a fan. I've been waiting. I told y'all Jermaine was one of my best friends. I told you. I told you. I, look. Whew. I haven't been able to come up for air. And he also mentioned my boy Puff, whose vocals was on the album for some additional vocals. Killer Cam and Lil John. And he made a Danny the Kane reference. I don't know if y'all peeped that, right? On Punching Clock. I was here for it. I was here for it. Now, y'all know what also I'm here for. I'm also here for Culture 3 is coming out June 11th as well. So just like Titus making projects coming out, Culture 3 from the Migos is coming out. They took it on social media just yesterday as well that the project will be coming out. And this is just after Friday's video and single release of Straighten It. So look, we are getting all the music in June and I'm here for it. And speaking of new music... We got three brand new records from Nicki, but we got it on the re-release of her 2009 fan favorite project, Be Me Up Scotty. Yes, the project is finally on all DSPs. She's got the break. She's got three tracks, like I told y'all. She's got the joint fraction. She's got alligator teeth. I'm sorry, crocodile teeth. Good y'all know it's, a, it's you know it's a it's a gator. It's an alligator. <laughs> Crocodile Teeth Remix and Singing Green with Drake and Lil Wayne. Oh my gosh, yes! Y'all been waiting for this. Now, you you know, ladies, ladies, it's, it's, it's about y'all. This is y'all season. Speaking of season of new release music, the late, great DMX's brand new project, Exodus, will be dropping next Friday. The 13-track project is, listen... X said in his last interview with TV One, and actually TV One did a uh, two-part documentary that aired on Sunday and finished airing yesterday as well. This project is his most released collaborations on one album. It features, listen, he got a lot of features on this project. I need to run down the list, so y'all got to bear with me. The Locks, Swiss Beats, Lil Wayne, Moneybag Yo, Snoop Dogg, Usher, Alicia Keys, and many more. Whoa. 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 Shout outs to DMX and rest in peace like, yo, I know that he got some more records that he, that they got in the vote for another project. Listen, I'm here for it. I can't wait, especially a record with Usher and Jay-Z is on the project too. I forgot to say Jay-Z. What? 
and Alicia Keys. Oh my gosh. That boy DMX was working. And he still got the movie coming. They still got that movie coming out that he was working on too. So he was busy. He was busy. I'm looking forward to that. Ariana Grande and her fiance Dalton Gomez got married over the weekend and at a tiny intimate ceremony in their California home. Congratulations to them because they are such a dope couple. But also, congratulations is in order for supermodel Naomi Campbell who welcomes her first child, a baby girl at the age of 50. Just this morning, Naomi let the world know that she welcomes her daughter. Congratulations to Naomi. That is like so damn dope, y'all. I told y'all we had so much amazing uh, entertainment news for y'all. But listen, we got to get into Dear Dwayne talking about domestic violence with one of our dear supporters, okay? Now, domestic violence is a big thing that also goes hand-in-hand with Mental Health Month, right? If there is anybody that is in a domestic violence situation, go seek help. Go get help the best way you know how. Listen, one of our loyal supporters reached out, and we have to have this conversation. It was so important to have this conversation. So make sure that you guys stay put with our girl, okay? Right here, okay? Let's get into the combo. Let's run it. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning back into On Air with your one and only rock star, the Mike David Dwayne, your narrator, curator, throwback millennial. Right now, we're getting into our Dear Dwayne section of the show. And first of all, this young lady, Kiana, is somebody who I've known for years. She has been supporting <laughs> our show. So when she reached out to me, especially the subject matter, you guys, like I said, we're talking about domestic violence. It is mental health month. So we have to talk about these things. These things are yeah. big. And Kiana, I'm so glad to have you on the show right now. Thank you so much. I know this was like a super last minute I called you and I was <laughs> like, Kiana, girl, we got to talk about this. But we did <laughs> talk about the importance of domestic violence. And I'm sorry that you're going through the situation that you're going through. And, and first of all, like I said, thank you again for being open to talk to us about, you know, this this matter and being a, a supporter as long as you have. I want to say almost like three Three years. Oh, four years. Yes. Four years. Four years. Four years. Yeah. <laughs> it's been it's been a long yes. time coming. So you've seen the the ups and downs. The... Everything. Yeah. You 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 changed, and I'm like, I definitely support that. Like, yo, pay everything is amazing what you're doing. Like, thank you. So I support 100. <laughs> percent Listen, 100%. without you supporting, listen, we 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 wouldn't be where we are today. So we appreciate it. So let's talk, let's talk about a domestic violence in your situation. I know this is something that you were not thinking that was going to happen. I don't think anybody quite expected in their relationship whatsoever. Like I told you offline too, and I'll tell everybody, I was a child of witnessing domestic violence at three years old. So this, you know, touches very close to home. So, you know, just fill us in, you know, what's, you know, what's been going on and like where you notice this, this starts to be a pattern. Definitely, especially in the LGBTQ community. I just want to start there is that a lot of us don't have an outlet to talk to someone. So, you know, we're already dealing with our own internal of coming out and being ourselves. And with my situation, yes, I am definitely going through a DV situation, domestic violence, which I never would have thought in a million years that it would happen. I'm still like kind of shaky about it and talking about it, but it's been helping me talk about it especially with David, his advice was really good. And, but things have alternately turned. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so there take, will be no, so, no couple counseling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but take, so take us, but take us back though. Okay. So we, so we can even get to, even get to that point. Cause even that little advice, that nugget I gave you offline and stuff like that, I think is definitely going to be helpful for anybody that's going through that, whether there are the yes. LGBTQ, it's IA, right? That's AI. the other letter. Mm-hmm. AI. It's yes. so many letters. I'm sorry, y'all. Please forgive me. I, <laughs> I'm, love I'm y'all. not. Listen, I am not hip with anybody's streets whatsoever. I just be, it just be me. But um, yes. you know, just tell us, you know, about, you know, what happened though. Okay. So um, I started dating this person of August 2020. It's like nine months now. It was going great. I missed the red flags. Honestly, there are red flags there that we just, don't want to acknowledge and it's so important to 
when your intuition or something happens, it's not to ignore it, it's to address it. The first incident that happened was I was accused of being on a dating site and I wasn't. Mm. I was actually playing with my cat and um, she, there's a game on my tablet and it turned on. And of course, with Androids, not all the apps closed. And I literally on video got cussed out. Um, and then it carried on and it just kept going and going. And um, I landed in therapy session because the manipulation was really bad. I started to not be able to talk to my best friends. Um, at first she was okay with my best friends. And then it was like, your best friends are negative. You need to uh, surround yourself with someone positive, which is her. I took a hiatus off of social media for like three months to thinking that it was me. I started to decline. I started to feel like I wasn't enough for her. I started to feel like my worth was just really decreasing and I had nowhere to go. It led me into not depression, but I did end up almost attempting to commit suicide. And that is something that I think we should all talk about with mental health is Absolutely. that, you know, it sucks that a person can unintentionally or intentionally cause you to have a mental breakdown and you're not seeing it because you're blinded you love you care about the person but for me it was just like my breaking point and even though I reached out to the person on the day that I wanted to take my life she was very loving and co consoling but then my intuition started kicking up and I realized that she was talking about me on some social sites I addressed her and I went over there to have a verbal conversation and you're allowed to do that. Your partner, you're allowed to have like a verbal conversation. It did become a yelling match. And that's also a sign of emotional mental abuse. And within that situation, I got attacked, <laughs> you know, so uh, small details, I was throwing around and I also was bitten in the course of that. And after the fact, you know, I didn't have no one to talk to because I don't know anybody has gone through this. And I was like, well, I still love her and I still care. I don't want to press charges. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But um, without going into details, I just decided to reach out to people and I reached out to David. And I know it was kind of like weird for you. You're like, okay, this is kind of, you know, random. But he, you know, mentioned he would give advice. And I was like, I need it because I feel like in my mind with mental health, I was going insane because it was like yeah. being pulled. So that's where we are right now. And it's been hell of a ride. <laughs> I could imagine. And it's still and it's still fresh of a relationship since it's been August of last year. So it's like once it's still fresh, you're still getting to know, know a person. I feel like you're always getting to know a person, no matter no matter how long it's been, right? Yes, so I know kind of yes, just going yes. through that, not seeing the red flags as red flags. And then once you finally realize that it was definitely difficult. So when once it happened, did you um what is the word I'm looking for? Oh my gosh, because I'm just I'm just blown <laughs> away because just with the the whole fine thing. First of all, somebody beat me. I was like, <laughs> you know what, you guys, honestly. I didn't come over, I'm not a violent person. I didn't come over there to fight. I came over to address the situation as usual. She would come to my house and address a situation she did not like. And she always liked communication. So that's what I was trying to do. I mean, everyone's gonna be upset. So I didn't go over there to fight. <laughs> I went over to talk and I ended right. up, yes, I did get bit. I did have to get a tetanus shot, which is not fun. So unfortunately, that there's consequences for that. Just, you know, so people are aware, um, it's not just mental and emotional abuse. You can uh, pursue that as, uh, you can put a restraining order on someone if they are mentally and emotionally abusing you. Um, it doesn't always have to be physical, just so you guys know. Yeah, that's very true. And I know that that was even something that you had explored, but now you guys had a conversation and stuff like that. So what would you say has, has been that conversation? Because I know my advice to you was definitely, you know, just try to, try to reconcile and just try to yeah. have a conversation because sometimes a first time is a mistake, you know, like I know that this person is a Taurus and we already talked about how <laughs> crazy Taurus get. Yes. You know, we, are, we, yes. are yes. we are crazy, but we love yes. hard. And the biggest thing is we realize that we're not perfect. Yes. We, and we, and we will admit where we are wrong when we feel like that it is definitely the right time in the right situation. 
and it's on, yes. and it's only been a, it's only been a couple weeks since couple you know weeks. this has happened, yes. but things are things are on a better up and up. You're saying though, um, I I did reach out uh, via email because that was our safe space that we use. Uh, created okay. that, um, but no reach back, no conversation, no. Uh, I was hoping for the best, to be honest. You know, when you yeah. love someone, you care about someone. Like I did take your advice. I really, it made me feel good that day because it was like I was going through a lot of emotions. I was crying a lot, um, but it just got worse. And you know, at this point, I'm sad because I really love her. And you know, she watches this. I do, <laughs> but. At the same token, I was attacked and you do have to, you know, proceed with a process when you're attacked. You can't allow yeah. someone to attack you and cause harm to you because honestly, if someone attacks you, it was intent to cause bodily harm. And that's what the authorities call it. So right. um, it sucks, David, because, you know, I wanted it to work. I, I still know. do, but... It I don't know. <laughs> and, it, and it's possible that it can, but at the end of the day, like I said, you have to put yourself first. You have to evaluate yes. the situation. Is this worth it? Is this reconcilable? Because I feel like there, you can always have a conversation, right? And I think that's the biggest thing that people don't understand. So everybody that's watching this right now, you can always have that conversation, just yes. clarity. It doesn't necessarily have to be that you guys get back together. You guys are friends yes. or, or did yes. you guys ever talk again? It, it Let the conversation just be what it is start there first and just being right. clear on both ends because we all make mistakes exactly and I, and I think that it's really great that you did reach out there and said look let's just have a conversation about this and via email because I know you were like look let's try to let's try to meet up and I was like I don't think that. <laughs> you're you know, right people, yes. are, people are crazy out here in these streets I want I want my girl to be safe you know what I'm right saying? And, yes and, you know and if you want to do it on the low, so then make sure you got some people that's, you know, <laughs> are left to the side and behind you. Just on the side. Something, right. Just in case something goes crazy, because girl. Yes, it is. Just, it is so serious. I honestly, with Mental Health uh, Month and um, especially in LGBT, I just, I just need us to all have a conversation, hop into people's DMs and just say, yeah. this just happened to me. Uh be open. You know, I know a lot of people are busy, but honestly, like depression is real. Um, mental health issues are real. A lot of people can't afford a therapist, but you can come talk to me. Um, I'm not a certified therapist, but I know how to talk uh, and get you to feel comfortable and relax so that you don't feel like you're having an anxiety attack. It's so important for us to all have each other, like literally during this time. Yeah. Because when you reached out to me and stuff like that, and I know you had saw the post about our dear Dwayne segment. Yes. I'm so so glad that you you know you felt comfortable with sharing this story with us because I think that there are tons of people that are going through this, especially within the LGBTQ community. Just I mean, just in yes. life in general, and they're so afraid yes. to speak out. You know, just you know, get get the help that they need. Yeah, because you know everybody's just like, oh, I'm I'm hard. I'm like, no, don't try to be hard. Just be <laughs> hard. You can. By not putting on a facade and just sharing your story helps other people too. Yes. It, more of us, LGBT, especially within the trans community, we already know, you know, the high numbers of them murders happening. But yeah, we need to talk about it. It's okay. Don't hide. Um, because I know the aggressors or, you know, the suspects, they make you feel guilty and they make you feel like you shouldn't. It's your fault. I felt bad for going over there. But at the same time, I went over there to have a conversation. I did not go over there to fight. If I'm in love with you, why would I go over there to fight you? I'm trying to understand why I'm seeing these posts on your social media and you want to get, you know, you want to, what do they call it? Nuck. What is it called? Nuck if you butt. <laughs> Nuck if you, look. I'm not from I'm Asia, getting, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting so damn old. I don't remember what, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. You trying to get nut? You trying to right? Nut, 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 nut. I don't know. <laughs> gully. Let's just go with gully. Yeah, there you go. We know they they know that one, and if they too young to know that, look, uh, I, I don't, don't know, know what but... <laughs> I don't know. What to tell you <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but it, like you said, in love, you don't want to have to fight in any oh. in any relationship. You just want to oh. be clear, yes. and you just. And you just want things to go right in it. Like I said, if it doesn't, 
proceed where you guys are dealing with each other on any level. Y'all, when I say dealing, it doesn't mean you're in a love relationship. Because you know, when I catch when you say dealing in relationships, people like to say, oh, it's, it's, it's romance. Right, right. All that no, other stuff. I, yeah, it's, you know, I wish her the best. I don't have no ill will. I don't hate her. I don't feel bitter. I don't feel any type of anything. I just, I wish it didn't go this way. But also yeah. too, I'm an emotional person and I felt like I needed to express my feelings and not hold it in. So, you know, the me. biggest thing is, I think that you learn even with this one ex- big experience it's like that, once is enough. Yeah. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. Once is enough. And they say, when somebody shows you, shows you their true colors, believe them. Now we don't necessarily know if this is it, but I can attest as a Taurus, that we get a little crazy. So like <laughs> That's I told why I had you, to talk to you. <laughs> right. So like I told you last week, we, you know, you've got to stay clear. You've got to protect your energy. And at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you're good and put yourself first. Because the number one thing that I tell people, and you know that I've been preaching this through the years, yes, you've got to yes. protect your energy. You've got to protect your mental. Because if nothing else matters in this world for everybody else, it's you. You got to make sure yes, you're sane. Yes, yes. Because... If you're not saying, people are going to walk right all over you, say and think that they're going to do whatever. And that's, and that's not cool. So I'm glad that you stood up and you were like, look, yes. this is not right. Oh my goodness. It's, it takes you strength when you're in an abusive situation, like yeah. you're nothing. And to stand up, you know, without my therapy, I don't know <laughs> where I would be, but yeah, you have to stand up. Tauruses are, are, we're compatible. I don't understand what went wrong. No, <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. Like we would, pow- we'd be a power couple right now. Um, but I love Tauruses. They're just very headstrong. And when which year's already assigned? Just so that everybody knows, I'm a Capricorn, and don't come for me because <laughs> <laughs> we are loving. Don't come for her because I will come for you. <laughs> right, come for well, you, your mama and your daddy. <laughs> right, but we're so loving, and yeah, Cor- uh, Taurus and Capricorns do work. It's just that our communication isn't there because we're both earth signs and we're both headstrong. Yeah. So it's kind of like who gets to be the lead, who gets to be dominant. Um, but man, I, I really do wish her the best. I do. I still love her and I still care about her. I just yeah. wish things could go this way. I wish we could talk it out before things, you know, reach the worst end. But it's up to her decision of how she feels. I really do wish her the best though. <laughs> yeah, because you did your part. And I think that that's the part that matters the most is when you you, you reach out, even yes. when you're like, hey, I, I did kind of do a little thing here. And, <laughs> and on, yes, on, on, on. even when you're the victim, you know, um, I won't mention pe- certain people, but they did say that victims do actually go back to their aggressor or their yeah. attacker. And I was like, I'm going back. Um, <laughs> but I, it's right like, on girl. <laughs> But it's that heartstring that's like, Taurus, like you said, Taurus are so loving and they do look out for you and they ride or die for you. But, you know, baby, we'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Just give we'll it, see. I would say, even with knowing the latest update, give it some time. You yes. know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, yes. try to, don't try to rush into anything new with anybody else. Don't try to rush back into anything. Let this, let some, some space and time. Yes. Give Give my Taurus fellow <laughs> friend some time to, you know, really sit into what has actually happened so that she Correct. has a moment to think about her actions. Sometimes, yes. we, sometimes we act without fully getting a true understanding of what's what. Yes. And, some, yes. and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But I feel like it's definitely a situation that, you know, you just give space and time and you and you know what's best yes I'm definitely like I'm enjoying the self-healing I need everybody to do yeah. self-healing during this, this all, like let's talk about the self-healing though it's a must <laughs> <laughs> it's a must yes I'm I'm a spiritual I'm into spirituality so I, I I love to read I like what David told me last week and I've just been doing the positive affirmations and just reading things and just understanding the circumstances that happen, but also telling myself I am enough. I recently just posted for the first time on Instagram saying I am enough. So um, it's so important to just, it's not just about meditating. You have to like internalize what you're saying 
and making sure that it reaches your subconscious state because you're so if I start preaching, see, now I'm going to start preaching on some <laughs> spiritual stuff. But your subconscious controls everything. You know, this you is the space it. where we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> your subconscious is the person, the part of your brain that just tells you, like, it whispers the dark thoughts. So you want it to reach, you know, when they say the third eye and all that stuff, they, you want it to reach the, reach the frontal lobe. And that's where the positive comes in. And you're actually inhaling it and you're feeling it and you're embracing it. And people feel your energy, you know? So it's important. It love important. yourself. You have to love yourself. And I'm glad that you said that the affirmations of speaking, I am, I will, I am more. Oh this is, and, just, and just speaking those things, because I think a lot of times people don't understand the power of tongue. Like you speak that negative stuff over your life, baby. You, it will happen. It Trust will happen. Yeah. So you guys got to get into the habit of saying, I am, I will, I will not tolerate this. I will not tolerate I will welcome more. I, 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 I. Yes. Even yes. though you- I had to learn it. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. And set boundaries, David. Mm-hmm. Oh, we did. We did talk about setting boundaries. See, boundaries. y'all. As I'm, as I'm remembering <laughs> the conversation that we had offline, I'm, I'm bringing it to you guys. And we and we talked about setting boundaries as well too. Definitely. Setting boundaries is super important. So make sure that so you important. guys do that. Know your know your wants and your needs, and be vocal. Yes. Yes. Speak out. Reach out. Don't let people cut you off from your friends, your family. None of it. Once they do that, it's a wrap for you. Um, definitely, like he said, stand up for yourself. It's so important to do that. If not, reach out. There is the suicide hotline. There is the DV hotline. There's advocates for free. Um, there's tons of resources out there in your state, your city, your county. Google it. Um, don't be alone in this during this time i'm here for you my dms are open um we gotta be together we gotta love together we gotta care together we have to and kiana i'm here for you and i really do appreciate appreciate you being comfortable enough to you know talk about your experience and just you know receive the advice and stuff like that because when you reached out i had no choice but to respond first with 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 a phone call and saying hey what's up of course Right. And then, I, and then I and then I nudge and then I nudged a little bit because I hear back from you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then I, I, and then like, I called, get back to you. <laughs> and then I called you last minute tonight. I was like, we 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 want to talk about this on the show. You down and stuff like that because it's domestic violence does play on the mental and it's it really so important. Like I said, people, I I've been that child that has witnessed that firsthand at the age of three. So, you know especially with somebody as special as you, Kiana, reach out and say that we have to make sure that we're having that conversation face-to-face, not just me just going off of an email saying, hey, dear Dwayne, da 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 No. Have the conversation, yes, because honestly, I was scared to reach out. I really was. I was like, it's too soon. I'm making a mistake, but it's a relief to reach out. It helps the healing process. Um, There's tons of people that I've reached out and they've been in the city situation that I didn't even know <laughs> like friends are like yeah a lot of people that. yeah it's good it's healthy don't let the aggressor or the attacker or the abuser win that's the point don't let them win absolutely not and how how would you say overall overall this week you're feeling for the most part I feel great I actually I'm not gonna say what my job is but I actually got permanent so <laughs> Hey, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. They called and was like, you want this job? I said, yes, I do. So I feel amazing, David. After our conversation, honestly, I just needed that last minute. Not someone to judge, not someone to tell me how to feel. Just listen and be like, well, here's the alternative. You could work it or you could do this or, but be safe. And I, and I just, that pushed me because I was a mess. <laughs> And I feel amazing this week. Monday was great. I'm glad David reached out to me. It just feels like I'm looking at next week. I'm looking at the end of this week. And I'm just like, I'm excited to move on. I'm excited to heal. I'm excited to, I don't know, manifest everything. Like conquer the world. Like I feel good. I feel good. And And I'm so happy for you to heal and stuff like that. And just be able to get into that good spirit that you've always been in and most yes. importantly, like like we're talking about healing, because that's the that's the most important part, right? And just yes. allowing that to happen and for it to take the time that it needs to not rush it. A lot of people try to rush healing in all things. 
Yes. And it's Don't jump to another person. Don't do that. <laughs> I can't tell people what to do. But like you said, healing, heal yourself. Because what you do is, um, we're going to have an offline conversation, but it's a soul time yeah. tool. Like, you know, when you enter another relationship and you're not healed, you're actually bringing that trauma with you from your partner and you're damaging. It's a domino effect. We got to stop damaging each other. And that's so important to just cut that, like stop. It's a domino effect. So I heal myself and I won't bring her trauma with me when I get with my next partner. It will be amazing. It'll, I'll be like, listen, you're gonna see us everywhere. <laughs> and she's gonna be, and Kiana gonna be protecting her energy. So don't y'all yes. try to approach her with the nonsense. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> I'll be like, she hey. on guard. Okay. <laughs> Dmx, rest in peace. But yeah, <laughs> man, this is great. This is so amazing. I appreciate you bringing me on. I know we appreciate you, like I said, for the support, being open to talk about such as, you know, important matter. Anybody that is going through domestic violence, thoughts of suicide, any, anything where you need counseling, seek counseling is very important. Make sure that you are protecting yourself in all ways possible. And I know I like to joke around and say with masks and condoms and all this other type of stuff, but I really mean that too. But <laughs> seriously protect your mental yourself because yes. Kiana then you thinking I'm crazy some of stuff about that other stuff too I'd be like no I'm serious wear your mask your hand sanitizer okay and use a rubber yes protect oh, yourself God. even as a most, protect yourself don't play but most importantly protect your mental so that that can eat so that all those other things can be a thought in your mind because without this being clear and all good that other stuff ain't going to even be a thought. Yes. Like you Lauren won't forget Hill about said. it. Yes. Lauren Hill said, if you ain't right within, wait, how you going to win? Don't met, don't get, don't get on me about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my how song, you going to win if you can't get within or whatever the lyric is. Me, him, or <laughs> we just don't know. Dang. I, I know the song. Know. Right. It's Lauren Hill, that thing. They know that song. <laughs> yeah, they, they know don't it. know they need to. You weren't born then. But they weren't born. <laughs> <laughs> Kiana, thanks so much. We definitely appreciate you, sharing with you. And again, good good luck with everything. You know we thank are here for, for you. Always a, a call away, a DM, an email, anytime that you I need us. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So much love. I just appreciate that, David. Thank you for having me. Anytime. And everybody, like I said, it's Mental Health Month. So make sure that you guys do everything that you can to really protect your mental. Go see help prayer, whatever it is to get your mind in a great spirit, go out running, go to the beach, exercise, whatever it is, just just get your soul going so that you can be right within, okay? Because you got it. Now now I'm thinking about that that Lauren lyric again. (laughs) But you guys- How you gonna win if you ain't right within? There you go. Come again. (laughs) There you go, yes. But guys, right now, we're going to get into our interview with Ajian. Yes, Ajian, the three-time Grammy Award-nominated singer-songwriter that you guys love with her Love Train series and her newest interlude project is joined with us. You guys have been waiting for this interview all night. Shout out to my girl, Kiana. Absolutely wanted to make sure we talked about such a serious matter before we got into this interview with Ajian. But we're going to get into this interview right now. Let's get into it, you guys. Here we go. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Azian, and you are about to kick it with my boo, my boy, David Dwayne. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning back into On Air with your one and only rock star, the mic, David Dwayne, in the place to be the throwback millennial. You're just all jack of all trades and everything. Right now, we've got Grammy Award nominated R&B singer song writer Ajian who has this brand new project the interlude now you guys know her from her love train series love trains and love train two like you which listen you had the people really jumping when we was outside with that one and just the vibe like you just a whole vibe and I just want to say thank you so much for doing this interview with us today. Thank you. Come on gas me gas me and, uh, listen, we, we have to because your accomplishments from starting off as a song, as, as an artist, and then say, you know what, let me dabble in the songwriting world and then get right back into artistry. It's something that we need 
to speak about, girl, because you've had a journey and you've been I've doing had a journey. I've been doing this for a long time, for sure. And when you think about the journey that you've been through, what 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 are those thoughts that come to mind? About time. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, it's like um, you know, just it's not necessarily all about the destination, it's about the journey. So I learned a lot along the way. And to getting here. So that was important as well. And then just learning who I am so I can express that in music and be unapologetic about that. And I feel like when I do that, I give other people permission to do the same. So that was very important that I needed to learn that and grow into who I am now. And I love that you mentioned that because a lot of people should feel comfortable with the person that they are. So I kind of mm -hmm. want to segue to even talking about sexuality and being comfortable in that skin because a lot of people around our age even younger and even older get mm -hmm. frowned upon for that and it's like a you know before it wasn't as a topic of discussion where it was a good right. thing now we're in a space where we are embracing it you are hearing the music you are seeing mm -hmm. it in all facets of culture you're seeing it in the black culture at its all-time high so how, so just being in that space and being able to be comfortable because before when you dropped music you were like look you had your boys in there, but you were like, uh, let's be honest. And we love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was an artist before, when I was younger, I basically just went by the format. It wasn't okay to be a lesbian and be out. It was just, you know, like, just do what you got to do to get popping. And you can talk about that shit later on in your life and your VH1. <laughs> True Hollywood story. We don't need to hear about it, yeah. right? Um, it came to a point where I was starting, when I came back from songwriting, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put out a project. And I had just fully came into myself and I was unapologetic about who I was. And I'm like, there's no reason why I'm going by Asia Bryan, which is a nickname. So I'm gonna go back to my first actual name, which is Azian. And then um, I'm gonna think about what my actual life is because why am I making, saying he or him to appease all these other people that don't really care about who I am. Like there's no purpose in me doing this. And so I felt it was, it was freeing for me to just be like, okay, this is my coming out a whole project. Here you go. But people already, I mean, people knew um, that I was a lesbian, but I just didn't speak about it that often. Yeah. I just kind of just worked, work, put your head down and work, work, work. And, th and that's kind of where it was. But now it's just like, nah, I'm not putting my head down. I'm not dimming my magical mm. light no. for you niggas. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and I love the fact that you did that because as people, we have to feel comfortable with the skin that we're in no matter what mm. that means or what the actual layers of that. Right. The makings of that. We shouldn't have to box ourselves in. So Shouldn't have to, but I mean, a lot of people do. A lot of people find it like that. And then there was a lot of no's that I got just because of being a lesbian. There's a lot of tours I didn't get invited on because of the content of my music. And it, it had nothing to do with my talent and everything to do with my sexuality, which shouldn't affect anyone because it's mine. It's not yours. And you have the choice to do whatever you want with your body. And I have the choice to do whatever I want with mine. Yeah, it's been it's been a... It's been a battle, but we knocking them walls down because what they gonna do? What you can't deny is this talent, baby. You can't, you can't. Back. And that's what I love about discovering your your music and stuff like that, back with uh, Love Train 2. Just seeing like the artistry in the, not even just the artistry, but the imagery. And we just talk about the imagery, like in your beauty that you embrace. It don't matter if it's curly hair like you got right now. It don't matter if it's, if it's long black hair. It doesn't matter what it is you really truly embrace yourself as a woman and out of, as a black woman. Can we just talk about the importance that that needs to be at this time? Because you know, we're going through crazy times. We got the pandemic, we've got Black Lives Matter, we've got so much. How important is it for a black woman to be themselves and just be honest, unapologetic? The way that well, you- To be honest, it, it didn't always feel like it was okay. You know what I mean? When you're darker skinned in your, it, it, there was definitely a stigma in the industry where it was like the light skinned girls were the stars and then the dark skinned girls were just, I guess, writers and whatever else they decided we were gonna be. And it's crazy because even at 15, I, um, I got body dysmorphia because I had an exec tell me that I was too big and too dark to do the music that I was doing. 
Mind you, I was way smaller than I am now. And this exec is still out here doing things in the industry. You know what I mean? So this is still something that's in people's minds, like the older generation of executives. And I'm just happy to be in a space and at a label where they don't care about any of that old stuff anymore because it's important for us to be seen. Like it's important for every little brown skinned girl who's a little thicker than most to be seen in a, in a high capacity at a high, high stage in her life where everybody's accepting her so she can accept herself. I feel like had I seen that when I was younger, I probably would have been more confident in myself. And I'm just here to let the girls know, listen, be you, baby girl. It's important. There's only one you in this entire world and we need to experience you. Okay. And, 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 and black women are so magical. Like we really, we really take on a lot. We hold it on our shoulders and we hold it with grace. We don't take nothing from nobody. You can call that a B or whatever you want to call it, but guess what? We're we not taking it. You not, you not. And then when, when people need us, we're right there. We hold everybody up. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about black women. Yeah. And especially brown skin women. So y'all, y'all are gems in my eye. I mean, listen, I love all of us in our shades. Of course, every shade is beautiful. Like this is not colorism at yeah. all by mm -hmm. any means. I'm saying all shades are beautiful. Yeah. And so we need to act like they are. Right. And it's so important because I feel like people get into they really do get into that stigma. It's not even just the industry. It's, mm -mm. it's in it's in it's in it's in our community. Like um, if you go to Africa, it's either your light skin or your dark skin. That's it. There's no in between. But here in America, it's like, oh no, you're caramel, you're mocha, you're blah blah blah, you're this color, and it's like all the way down to be like right. Mm -hmm. It's like wait to, to these subcategories. That's what I'm just black. Yeah, our black is beautiful. Damn all it. of it. <laughs> That's what I'm just black. We just black, and we exist in, in our blackness. Let's let's go with that. Yeah. And it's, and it's just one of those feelings that I think it takes people a long time to feel that confidence because there's just so much that goes on. Mm -hmm. So when you were able, I want to kind of touch a little bit more on this. So when you were able to find your confidence more as a person and as a woman and then as an artist, what, what was that moment for you that you said, you know what, fuck all that. Let me just do exactly what I'm here to do. And even from going from, the stage name to back to your actual name and rock. You know, I was recovering from a heartbreak. And I was in, I was really depressed and my dad had been murdered. So it was like a lot all at one time. And then I realized like I had changed into this person that I didn't know. Right. And so, cause you know, like when you're in relationships, you keep changing little things about yourself to appease that other person. Then it, at the end of the day, they end up not even knowing who you are, liking who you are anyway, cause you've just changed all this stuff. But you, you know, like you got to recognize these things about yourself. Like, mm, no, that ain't me. So I started to build myself up like building blocks. And I use this analogy a lot where like, you know, I saw the things that I didn't like that I changed with somebody else and I took them out. Right. And I just started building myself up. Mm -hmm. Until I was so strong in my foundation and my structure that nobody could tell me nothing. You couldn't tell me nothing about who I am because I already know. I did all my self-accountability. I looked back at all the instances where I felt like someone had wronged me and I tried to figure out what I did in those moments. The things that I don't, I didn't like about myself, like I used to be very negative. Turn the switch off on that. We're not doing that. Anytime I would think something negative or say something negative, I would follow it by either three positive thoughts or three or save three positive thoughts. So I got into the habit of saying more positive things than negative about myself and then just about everything. And it was in those moments that I, I really built it up. And then I was just like, OK, I'm done. <laughs> she signed so delivered. Ozzyan is back. What's good? And it, it's, it's not it's no stopping from there. No once doubt. you really get in that bag, once you really get in into yourself, nobody can stop you or make you feel no type of way about you. You already know everything. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I try to tell people that, especially on this show, like you, once you figure out who you are, you have to just continue to embrace that. And just like mm -hmm. you said, to break it down. Okay, this is what I don't like. Okay, we remove that. This is what I do like. Add that. Okay, how can I? Right. That? And even if it's <clears throat> I want to find a and it might be some type of negative spirit, energy, some negative energy, not even a spirit. But how mm -hmm. can I level that up 
so that it's not right. taking the wrong way and make that positive in shaping that and molding right. it. And it, it, it's, it's finding the positives in all things. It is some for some people. It's very hard to do because, like, when something small happens, it's like World War Three, and it's like you've been through worse things than this. So why are you letting this affect you this way? You know what I mean? You're stronger than this, and reminding yourself that, and giving yourself grace. Like, if you don't feel like doing anything today, that's fine. You don't have to, but tomorrow get back up and sh and start again. You know, give yourself grace, the same grace and love and good energy and advice you give to all the people you love, your friends, give that to yourself and, and embrace it and, and really take that in. Like, I find that when I talk to people about that, they're like, yo, I'm so mean to myself and I don't even like, we all are, it, it's a thing. And so we got to practice self-love and giving ourselves grace so we can go out here and be the best versions of ourselves. If we don't start here, we can't expect to get it anywhere else. And if you're expecting to get it anywhere else, you're putting your confidence and your happiness in someone else's hands. And that's that that doesn't work. Phew. You just said a message in a word. <laughs> has to start with us first. Has to start with us. And I think that's you have to decide. Yeah, like then we can start loving these other individuals. Hell, the, and those individuals being our family, being our friends, and right? To set the tone to how to love us. Mm hmm. Boundaries. Yeah, those boundaries. Boundaries are so important. And Ooh, with, I love a good boundary. <laughs> and I'm sure in relationships that you've been in before, and even now to this point, you put you put up really good boundaries so that you're not. When I was younger, no. I'm very. I'm a very giving person. I'm very much. I will give you my last thing if I have it, if I love you, and I will figure out my life. Now I've learned to give it to those who deserve it. Yeah. And I manifest discernment all the time just so I can see people's energy and who they are when I meet them. Because a lot of people can put on a, a facade and, 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 and be one way, but then really be a whole nother person. So in relationships, any type of relationship, whether it be personal or friends, I'm definitely very an energy person. I go off energies a lot. So when I meet somebody and they got bad energy, I already know, listen, you're not my cup of tea. You could be having a bad day today, but your energy will never lie. I try to tell the kids that your energy ain't right. You got to go eh, over there, stage left or right, whichever way you want to go. Just wherever the door is. Yeah, wherever the door is. But just not, <laughs> just not on stage. <laughs> and, and, and then the, the other thing about it is being unapologetic about that. Being unapologetic about letting people go and not giving a reason as to why, because you don't owe anybody that, you know, <clears throat> sorry. You don't owe anybody an explanation as to why you want to keep your peace and keep your energy. And, and I find a lot of people have a hard time being unapologetic about keeping their peace and their energy cleansed of negative vibes. And, it, and I feel like when you're just honest about it, it always works out the best. Like I've had friends that I'm like, yo, you're my last negative friend that I have in my life. I really love you and I don't want to let you go, but baby, I can't. Mm -hmm. And then they, they, that's something they probably didn't even notice that they were doing, you know, something that they needed to hear. And then they'll go back and reevaluate. Like, you know what? You was right. I'm glad you told me that. And that's how most of my relationships have gone. If, if, if it's even gotten that far, like where I'm just like, yo, we got to have a powwow. <laughs> powwows are so important to have with everybody being like, look, I, I'm not really feeling the energy that you're bringing right here. I'm doing great. You need to check it. Or we, it, it, starts, it starts at home. It starts in, in your surroundings. Like we can't have these big conversations about changing the world. And we don't even have the conversations with the people who surround us, our, our, our tribe, our crew, whoever those people are. You got to have those conversations there. So when you move, you are moving force because everybody's energy is great. Everybody's in a great space. Everybody is full. You know what I mean? Instead of saying, you know, oh, the world sucks and everything is horrible here. And yeah, like what? So what are you going to do? You got to start with you first, mm -hmm. then branch out to your group, your crew, your tribe, and then do something bigger and keep going and keep leveling up and keep pushing those goals until you find yourself being surrounded and in a life that you want because you choose that. You know what I mean? Every step of the way. Yeah. Happiness is, is definitely something that we have to choose. And I'm glad that you chose the happiness, your happiness to say, you know what, let me walk away 
from this label and stuff like that. And even in that process, you had you recorded your demo, you worked with Luda, and you guys have such a great relationship. And I, I want to just talk about what that was like to actually record a demo because you know the kids ain't recording demos no more. They just sending records to the they end. just putting records out, Henny. They just like oh. Let me send this to you. I see you on Clubhouse and on, on the Instagram. Let me just shoot it right in on your inbox. It's a different world. It's so a different from, world. So from learning from that point to now to this point now, how would you say the benefits are and what that process was, was, was like for you? I will say the benefits of now, like social media and um, being able to basically be uh, your own label, um, it's just that. Because you can put your songs up on TuneCore or any of those distribution um, sites and, and they will distribute your music to every platform, every single platform they'll distribute it to. And um, you don't need a label to do that. Now, back in the day, you needed a label to do that. Um, but it also came with artist development, which I think is very important and is lacking a lot these days. Um, knowing how to you know, have an interview or just perform or make sure that your mental is stable. A lot of those things tied into um, artist development. And I don't see that a lot. And which is why a lot of people are really depressed. And you know, there's a lot of artists who are depressed. And I'm just like, oh my, I just want to hug you, little baby. Just come here. You're like, I, I, like, I wish you to have that guidance. Or something. I wish you had, right. And not to say that people don't get that way without artist development. I just know that it was a, a huge tool back in the day to creating the biggest of the biggest stars. And, you know, and we, we idolized them because they were so great, but because they worked hard at it. You can just make any type of song now. And if it goes up on TikTok, you lit. But where, where does that leave you in longevity? Where does that leave you? Does that leave you prepared to face what having a, a high profile song looks like and, and, and everything that comes with it? I, I don't think it does. So anytime anybody's like, OK, what do you what do you suggest I do as a new artist? I always say learn your craft. That's number one. And, you know, make sure you be yourself and make sure you check in on your mental and you check in on those things that matter because it, it, it matters. It matters how you create. Yeah, it definitely does matter. And I think that art, artist development, like you said, is definitely is missing. I feel like there's a lot there's missing. I think that there's the professionalism that's even missing <laughs> to the artistry. It doesn't matter what genre it is. It's like these people don't want to do the proper you know, photo shoots. They don't want to get with the right mix and master team. They just want to get out here. And it's like, you have to see it all before you walk. And if you want to try to, if you want to reach a valley, you've got some hiking to do to get to that peak. Right. There's, 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 there's a lot of, I, I don't, I don't want to ever make someone feel like there's one right way to be an artist and to do your thing. Cause there's, there's no one right way some people are just super naturally gifted to where they don't have to go through any of that type of stuff and they just get it. However, a lot of people do reach out to me and just send me stuff. And then on a, on a random free day, I'll actually sit down and go through my stuff and listen. And then it the mix will throw me off. Everything, I'll just be like, oh my God. And it's like, you have to realize when you're sending somebody something, you're sending it along with all the top list a-list people who mix their records and send them in. So you're going against professionals. So if you want professionals to look at you and take you seriously, put in the time to mix and master your records. Put in the time to make sure your record is actually dope. Is this something that you would give Beyonce today? If you can't say yes, you should go back to the drawing board. Before sending it to anyone, because you want to put your best foot forward. You want to give the records that you would give to the biggest artists out here and you wouldn't feel no type of way. But there are some people who don't even think about that. You know what I mean? They they or they may think that their stuff is on the level of that. And it's like. It's not. Yeah. And that's no shade. There's great. There's growing in that. There's growing in that because whenever I do hear something, I do give construct constructive criticism. I'm like, hey, baby, this was a, this is an okay song. I think you should maybe revisit your hook. It's not catchy enough, and you need to really mix this record. I will actually give feedback. I'm not one of those people who would just listen and just scoot on to the next one. Even when I started working on the interlude, I 
put up an email and told everybody just email me beats. And I went through my beats on Instagram live one by one. And I would give my criticisms on live and they would be in the room and they would, you know, some people would go back and fix it and send it back to me like, oh, okay, bit. I have, I've, I've chosen beats from random people and I don't know what they've done or if they've done anything for anybody to be on my project because I don't think it's always about your accolades and all the things that you've done for these other artists because who's to say you'll do that for me that's y'all's chemistry that has nothing to do with what we've got going on here so I like to give that open opportunity but when we're giving the open opportunity and you finally have somebody's ear to listen you have to make sure your stuff is right wow that's true and I'm glad that you said that too because, because a lot of people would not know that you reach out to people to be like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the submissions. Tell me what you got. Because it yeah. doesn't have to be this person here and this person there. Even if you do have good relationships, it's all about building more relationships and mm -hmm. put a whole project together. And it's like, yeah, I could go to every producer that I already know who's already popping, but I want to hear something new. I want to hear something from another perspective. And I oh, I posted it on Twitter and on Instagram and gave them my email. They lit me up and we went through all of them things. Every last one of them on my live. I chose one. Sometimes I would get off live like, yo, I'm going to create to this right now. Like it, it, it was that type of vibe, like even um, messed up, which is on the project. Now, Cardiac sent that to me while I was on live and I listened to it. I was like, oh, okay, y'all, love y'all, but I got to go because I need to go record this right now. Yeah. Right now. And it just happens like that. And you've done a lot, of, and you've done a lot of records with him, too. Yeah, Cardiac's my guy. How is He's it going with Cardiac? You know what? Cardiac gets things that I don't have to say. And you don't all you don't always find that in a producer that will just get you right off the rip. Like a lot of the times I'll be thinking something and he'll do it. Or I'm like, yo, I'm missing this, but I won't give him too much information on what I'm missing. He'll just send it. And I'm like, you always know, Cardiac. You always know. He's like, he's like the Timberland to my Aaliyah. You know what I mean? He's he's very, we're very cohesive. We we don't miss. We don't miss. I don't miss. We don't miss Love Train and Love Train 2 and some of the records that y'all still ain't heard yet. We don't miss. Because I know that uh, the interlude is going to be followed up with the second. Is. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> like we had even said before, like the, what you do with these projects is you do them in different, you know, segments. You do one, you do two. You don't just say, look, I'm going to just give you a full body quite yet. What's the strategy behind that before we even talk about the interlude and just kind of breaking down the different uh, series of these projects? Growth would be the difference between them. Like Love Train, that's all I had to say in that moment in my time in life. That's where I was, which is why there's a truth and a truth volume too. Whatever my truth was in that moment isn't invalid because I've grown. It's still there. It's still a thing. It's people still resonate with that record, but I had grown in Love Train too. That's why my truth was different. That's why it was an interlude. I did it on purpose because I know whatever I'm thinking and feeling in this moment is going to change. If it doesn't change, I'm not growing. So Love Train that's a moment in time where that's exactly how I felt. Love Train 2, that's a moment in time when that's exactly how I felt and all the things that I was actually going through. And now here we are on the interlude when I got off the train because I need to go live life because life ain't all about being in a relationship. It's not. We, we don't just, we're not just alive to be in a relationship. We got to live. We got to experience. We got to learn who we are and what we like and we don't like. And we have so much other things to do to empower ourselves and others. And it's like, I need to make a project about that. And that needs to be the interlude. And the interlude, you know, basically is taking a small brief break away from something else before you go into the last phase of it. And so that's what the interlude is. And I felt like I needed to do it in parts because I just like to give you enough to be satisfied, but not enough to be full because, honey, it, it's, it's so good. And like when you listen to the songs individually, I feel like it, like even when I put out Gucci Frames and Getaway, they could not see how these records went together until you listen to the whole thing in its entirety. And they're like, oh, this is amazing. They constantly go. It, they cohesively go, although they have different vibes. Yeah. So it was it was paramount and very um, important for me to show that because I want my listeners to grow with me 
grow with my sound. I'm not going to always sound like I did in 2017. 20, some of those records are from 2015, I'm actually, on Love Train. So, huh? So you vocally have come a long way. And as an artist, you know what's crazy? I used to sing more back in the day, um, <laughs> but I felt like if I went all the way crazy on Love Train, I would have nowhere to go for Love Train 2 or the next project. So I kind of dialed it back on purpose to, to because when experience you a growth. You know what I mean? I don't want to ever want to be that pro that person that puts out the popping ass project and can't follow it up. Not saying that I ever would because if I write one good song, I can write another one. It's just, I want it to grow. I want it to grow. I want people to grow with me. I wanted you to see the, the experience, which is why we started adding live in instrumentation on Love Train 2, but nobody really, I, I kind of peeked it in there. Like, and then here we are I'm on like, the interlude. There's a lot more live instrumentation. And Nukes was like, I want to grow. I want. I, I don't want any of my projects to sound stagnant, like I'm still stuck in a place. I want you to grow where I'm growing. And so I feel like if I give my listener a little bit of this here, then they won't be surprised when it comes out on another project. Like, oh, okay, she brought that back. She put some more live, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's just about being strategic and what you're putting out and being authentic in, about what you're putting out. Yeah. Ooh. Girl, I was trying to jump in there and give my little two cents as you were saying it. But you know, the thing is, though, you always want to leave room for more. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that some artists don't like to do when they put out these large sums of projects. They're like, let's yeah. just get it on out. And I'm going to be like. I, I could never do like a 40 song project. It's too much. It's too much. The the person, I can't even, like, wh why would I have, what can I say in 40 songs on the same project that would be cohesive, that wouldn't be repetitive? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I just, I don't personally feel the need to do anything like that. And I know everybody's like, oh, your interlude is too short. Well, it's because you're getting another one very soon. So. And is it, is yeah. it, did you do that and tease them with the little app, the little, little appetizer and it just, mm -hmm. And it, keeps you, it keeps you engaged. It keeps you feeling like you're getting something new. I could have put all the songs on one project, but then as soon as you listen to the whole thing, you like I'm getting DMs right now. Like, so when's the album coming out? So when's the album coming out? And I'm like, well, the EP just came out, so maybe you like Probably listen to that one first. <laughs> um, you know, like vibe with her for a little bit, and then you know, like a project will come after but like i think it the world has turned into a place where you quickly consume something and you want an artist to put something out immediately after and that just does not work for artists we we put a lot of time and energy into the projects that we release and we want to give those projects time to live and breathe and walk and grow and when we're just putting out thing after thing after thing after thing we're not we're not allowing it to do that and we're not allowing ourselves to even grow in those moments to where we can even write and be inspired to do something else. So that is a roundabout way of why I chose <laughs> to do them in in a um, series. But it's a good thing that you did do it like that. That way people can get into your brand and get into your artistry as they discover you more. Right. Because, you know, people discover people in different ways, whether it's a blog, whether it's Instagram, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, finding you on an interview or if it's an, a Beats One interview or an interview with Dave Dwayne or something like that. It's always going to be something different. And I, love it. and I love the fact that you did that. Even with R&B music, right? Let's even talk about mm -hmm. that, right? I think that within the genre that we love that's near and dear to us both, mm -hmm. you don't want to put out so much in that mm -hmm. space, you want people to digest it. You really want people to be like, look, this is what this is right here. Take this right for a moment. But then what I've noticed in the space of R&B is just like hip hop, just like pop. These fans want more when they truly love your artistry. Mm -hmm. I gotta ask you, how does that feel to know that your fan base is off the chart? Cause I know- You know what, it, it, it's bomb. It's exciting because it, it makes me feel like I have a space here. I had never really felt like the person who just fit in any group or clique of people. I was always the person that was the friends of all peoples in all the groups. So like, it just makes me feel like, okay, this is my place. This is my, this is, this is where I reside. This is my 
happy space here. That's so important too. Like just finding your space, your pocket. And I feel like people are resonating with it so much because I'm just being honest. I'm just being real about who I am and my everyday life struggles. And people resonate with that. Yeah. We love an honest queen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so who got time to lie? Lie for what? What you finna do to me? Because we's in a crazy time. We is in a crazy time. And let me ask you how mentally you've been doing, you know, with, you know, the, everything that's going on, still having to record, taking that time to really, you know, reflect on your feelings and then bring it out, out on paper and then have, then also still being able to shoot videos in, the, in this time too. Well, it, it was very hard to create in this climate. I was actually really sick um, for the first half of quarantine really and then I had like a surgery and now I'm healed so it's like okay now it's now I, now I'm like it's time to go I was sitting down too long I was sick as fuck sorry Ooh. I was sick <laughs> I don't know about nurse yeah we grown go ahead let it know <laughs> I, I was sick as fuck and then I needed to get an emergency surgery and then I almost died in surgery which when I was better and okay and healing i'm like i can't take this for granted i need to go hard go hard right now like in this moment so we just set up the sessions and i'm actually in the studio right now i'm supposed to be working so i hope they're not mad at me <laughs> better not because you because look we working right now you know it's all a part of that process it's all a part of the process no but i i couldn't imagine and you were actually in you were in atlanta before you had went back to la when the whole quarantine yeah was i was crazy. filming here and then i heard that we went on lockdown like, we went on lockdown like two days before i left and then i got home and there was like nothing all the tissue was gone the paper towels people had bought up everything i'm like yo what i'm gonna eat what i'm gonna do why what y'all y'all eating tissue why y'all take all the tissue because they brought all the food and they need them tissues to get with their issues. You know what? Come on. Because that's exactly what they did. <laughs> My mom was sending me tissue. I'm like, Mom, can you send me some tissue from South Carolina? She did. She sent me some tissue. It was like $100 to send. I was like, tissue? Tissue? Jesus. It was a mess. But, you know, we back. We good now. It's, it's, it's lit. I got I got a a, a <laughs> supply of tissue, okay? Because I was not playing. Right, and being able to record not only in the space of being in LA, but Atlanta as well, because that's always been home for you. I mean, you grew up on the East Coast. You grew up all over, all over, <laughs> which is a good thing. So that means you were always able to adapt to different, you know, yeah, locations like that. How was it being able to create no matter where you are? Um, amazing because that means I don't have to wait to do anything. I'm a very self-sufficient person. So I have my own studio in my house and Love Train 2 was all recorded in my own house by me. And even a lot of the records uh, messed up was recorded in my house. Um, there's a lot of records that happen right in my own home. Um, and then there's those records where I come out and I get to vibe with other energies and we could just get to come together and be super creative. And those are also amazing moments because you just never know what you're going to come out with. But y'all, y'all will hear what we came out with soon. Ooh, soon, soon, soon. I can't mm. It's a vibe. I know. And if I you know. happy about the interlude volume one, baby. Girl, when you when you did the post about it, I was like, wait, what's what's I'm like, what's this here? <laughs> what's about to happen? What's that? <laughs> it's like jumping for so much joy. And it's yeah. crazy because you put out your project almost practically basically like every other two years kind of thing. That wasn't on purpose. <laughs> I know that wasn't on purpose, but coincidentally. Coincidentally, that's kind of how it's happened. Um, because both times I was signing to a label. First time I was signing to Caroline after um, I did Love Train 2. And it just took a very long time to sign. And then I upstreamed from Caroline to Motown, which was another deal that we were negotiating for like over a year. And then... Finally, it was like, okay, we're signed and let's get the music and the music been done like the like messed up and songs like that were done like almost two years ago. Like these songs are old. So imagine how much in new material and things I have for y'all. Yeah, I can only imagine. And let's talk about your patience during the transition of having this music that you know, that you knew that you want to put out for this project and then going through the, the Honey. Feel. 
she, she, I had to grow in that, okay? Because I really didn't have patience. I was like, I'm going to lose my momentum. What the <laughs> heck? I'm ready to put my project out. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And now it's like, when the project comes out, I've already heard it for so long. I'm just like, did we do new one? <laughs> How often do you listen back to your projects outside of performing them? I wouldn't say that often, but every once in a while I'll get in a mood where I'm just like, let me just, let me just hear myself. And then I'll just let me run. And I'm like, yes, I really did that. Like I'll listen, like it's not me. Right. And I'm like, oh, she better sing. She better do that. And I'll literally be talking about myself. I'm so weird. But, you um, listen to like, like you and curiosity. When I listened to the harmonies and things I did, I was like, okay. You did something. You did something there. Like I really, I literally go back and listen to some things like, like it ain't me. Yeah. And 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 I I do it often now because when I'm recording my own music, I don't listen to outside music. So there's a lot of projects that I haven't gotten a chance to hear yet because I don't want to be unknowingly influenced. And I I feel like a lot of people get that like, and they end up sounding like someone else because you just heard something and it kind of got into your subconscious mind. And now you're creating something. You're feeling like it's all authentic. It's like no, no, somebody else did that. And now y'all sound similar, but it's cool. In the influence. Right. I only like to be influenced by myself. So I'll listen to myself when I'm recording projects. And I do that to know where I've been. So I know where I can go. Like, okay, we did that already. Let's do something else. Wow. Yeah. And that and that even in, in itself shows growth. Mm. I love that. Who were some it pushes me to grow? Yeah. Who are some of the R&B artists, male and female, that you love right now? Oh, you know, let me look at the playlist because I got a whole playlist. Let me <laughs> let me look at my playlist of people I've actually added to my own playlist. My jams, of course, Black, yeah, Lucky, yeah. Black, Lucky Day, artist named Sierra Sean, Frank Ocean, Steve Lacey, Masego, Tiffany Goucher, Xavier Omar, Mino, Saba, Sir, Brent Thayas, Kyle Dion, Summer Walker, Her. And then I got some Anita Baker in here, D'Angelo, TF, Tevin Campbell, <laughs> <laughs> Marie Legit, Amber Mark, Aaron Ray, freaking Bryson Tiller. Like this, the internet, my Gibby on, like DVSN, Fouché, like my assortment of songs is very eclectic and all over the place but like this is probably the only playlist i listen to outside of my own music when i'm creating just because it's a vibe mm -hmm. and that's the playlist that you created right yeah and i can't wait to get into jasmine sullivan because i know she's singing down i know she is singing down okay girls and the guys have been all over social media like talking about i haven't checked it out yet i've only heard clips and I've been like trying to stay away and not like I bought it and everything. So it's ready for me to listen to when I'm prepared to listen to it. But I can't listen to it yet. I got I got to finish th these sessions first and then I'm going to be all up in it. Yeah. <laughs> and who's who, what artists do you want to collaborate with? Or is there any that we can possibly expect in the future? Well, I won't tell you who you can expect because you just never know. People I would love to create with. Oh man, that's a, that's a list. Some random. Imogen Heap, Billie Eilish, her, uh, Lucky Day. I feel like me and Kyle Dion might do something crazy or Xavier Omar. Hmm? I said I could see that. That'd be fire. Miguel. Mm -hmm. I see. See, you saw it. Mm -hmm. I feel like me and Miguel might do something crazy. Beyonce, of course. I mean, because it's like Beyonce. Like, who don't want to work with Beyonce? Right. Um, Jasmine right. Sullivan. Um, Megan Thee Stallion. Um, man, there's a list. Uh, Tierra Whack. Rhapsody. Andre 3000. Erica Badu. Who else? I have ideas. Girl, I, and I feel like them ideas are sa sounds like something that is already be brewing. Got something. Mind your business. Mind your business. Okay? Just mind your business. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. 
No, but I'm looking forward to it. And I and can we talk about go back to the interlude and talk about messed up? Because that's one of my favorites. I told you I was going to tell you which one were my favorites. But the whole app, the whole e- EP is a bop. Like it's just like we were talking about before we got started. It just depends on your vibe and where you're at. And then mm-hmm. you messed up. Child, you did that. Thank you. You know, I was just feeling a little frisky or whatever. And like sometimes it'd be happening. And then like I got into a vibe and I was like, ooh, one sheet, two sheet. <laughs> and that's how the song started. I think I was drinking too. I was on live and I was having wine or something. And I was going through the beats. And then Cardi had popped in my live, like, yo, what's up? And I'm like, nigga, send me a pack. What are you talking about? What's up? He sent me something. What you were talking about? Yeah, we, we were on live. I'm like, send me a pack, bro. Send me a pack. He sent me a pack, and that was the first thing I played. I was like, okay, y'all gotta go. I gotta go record this real quick. The song was already in my head. It was already done. That's amazing. And how quick is your process with songwriting? I write a song in anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Just to pump it So when you are when you a real songwriter, you don't need to take a thousand days. No, but you know what? It depends on what the process is. Some some people like to come back to records and rewrite stuff, and I just find that my first are organic thought, melody, and words are always my best. So I go straight off the rip, and then it's done. It came to you and spoke to your heart, right? And that always should be what is heard before mm-hmm. we have to rewrite something. If we rewriting something, we gonna add a little little some 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 in it. Right. So well, that's amazing. I really love this project and you doing your thing. Speaking of songwriting, you've had some songwriting success. Can we talk about it? Tell the kids, like, <laughs> who you've written for? Because that's something that is, like, incredible. Uh, you know, I've, I've written for a few people. You know, nothing too crazy. Miley Cyrus, Chris Brown, Dr. Dre, Drake, J-Lo, Wayne, you know, Iggy Zelia, Pitbull. Just to name a few. Right. And that's a dope little list right there. Now, <laughs> that's major. That's heavy, heavy. Like, fucking Jennifer Lopez. Like, a little list. Miley Cyrus. What? Cute. She's cute. <sighs> that booty record. Y'all did that. Work. <laughs> And a lot of people underestimated that record. They did. On a whole nother level. So when She you- charted, charted. We had a number yeah. one on in the dance scene on Billboard with that record. We really had a whole situation. It was and they still, they're still performing it. They're performing it on dance shows. They're, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's about the booty. It is. <laughs> and having that booty. That okay. booty. I love I love that record. So Thank you. so when you are songwriting, whether it's for another artist or yourself, what what's the mind state? Is it is it do you make do you make it similar? Do you make it different? Like what what's that inner energy that gets gets you know that process going? Through? I never write anything for anyone else that I would write for myself. Okay. So I never confuse it to, you know, how people are like, oh, I had this song and it was for me, but this other artist wanted it. I don't, I, whatever I write for myself is for me. And the things I write for other people are strictly for other people. And it depends. Um, for me, I'm just going on my mood, whatever I feel like talking about that day or whatever, wherever the track moves me for um, other people. I like to try to get to know the artist really quick. Like, okay, we got to become besties real quick. What's going on in your life? What's happening? Because I want to make something that's going to resonate with that artist and they perform it better when they do. So, um, that's kind of like my mental state when I start creating with, um, other artists. And it's a good thing that you do that because a lot of, especially as a female songwriter, mm-hmm. like that's, I, I realized that is like the common consistency. And mm-hmm. any, any true songwriter. Right. He would just send it like, oh, I wrote this song and do 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 do. That's great. I mean, sometimes, a lot of times we do, like, we, we all have a catalog with a lot of songs, and then something you may have written may resonate with an artist later on, and, and, and you didn't write it specifically for that artist, so I feel like as long as you're creating something that's authentic to you and how you feel and something that you can stand behind, I think, you know, it's, it's lit. It'll be fine. But that is, that is lit that you've had this these songwriting credits. 
I mean, are, you know. are you are you working on any placements in within this new year in new decade? Not really. Not really. Not really. If they happen, they'll happen. Okay. They're going to happen organically. I feel like I've already gone through the phase of my life where I just like broke my neck trying to get placements, you know, and um, now I'm just very happy creating my own music. And then when those collabs come by, when I get to work with another artist is because I want to and I'm inspired to do so, not necessarily because I'm trying to like secure my livelihood which is a different thing like it like working so much at something can make it not feel fun or love it anymore and then it feels like a job and I don't ever want music to feel like that for me so when I do work with other artists it's because I really believe in them and I really want to otherwise I'm not just picking up projects nowadays I know that's right we ain't got time okay ain't got the time if it don't make you happy why are you doing it and that's the thing that always gets me about people. Like, if it doesn't make you, if it doesn't serve you happiness, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be in there and then be mad at yourself because you were there. Like, no, mm -mm, I ain't doing that. We ain't got time. I mean, they would love for me to write for other people. I'm pretty sure they would. They ask all the time. But it's like, when I, when I get, when I get in my writer bag, I'll let, I'll let you guys know. Right. And you got, and you got to be in that space. But it's good that you are acknowledging, look, Mm -hmm. Artistry world for me is really what I love doing the most. I'll write right. for me and be able to tell my story because we've got something going here, especially with your fan base that you've right. spent so much time. You and your team have spent so much time investing them, doing shows from New York to LA to Atlanta to all over the country and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. think that it's so important, and it's I commend you for taking these things and be like, you know what, yeah, the girl, the girl's good right here. Girl's good right here. And what advice do you have for up and coming songwriters and, and singers that you know want to get into this business, create a project, want to pivot, but really want to also ultimately focus on them and be able to tell their narrative without it being controlled? Again, um, learn your craft, learn music business, watch documentaries on musicians and their labels and the failures and the things that happen there learn from other people's mistakes so you don't make the same ones and be authentically yourself if you feel like you want to do something do that if you don't want to do it don't do it there's no amount of money in this world that is going to make you happy so if you're doing music just for money you won't be happy you'll just be financially secure and to be financially secure without happiness is not the goal. Well, you just spoke a message in the word. And I hope, <laughs> people, I hope people really take in what you say when you, with that. Because it's so important. Because it's like if you're doing something that's authentic, if you're doing something that you believe in and that you can stand behind, money's going to come anyway. I, I always say all money ain't good money. So I'm not going to hop in any session just because I heard there's a check there. Like, no, do I believe in this project? Do I believe in this artist? Is this something I want to do? If the answer is no, I'm not going. Right. That's important. And I've got to ask you, as an artist and as a woman, what exemplifies you when you think about the person that you are, what you've become and what you're becoming? You know what? I, I try not to think about that so much because it's like I'm thinking about the future then. I'm thinking about what's next. I want to think about what's present and, and live in the present moment and, of course, set goals of things I want to do. But I know there's a lot of actions that I have to take in the present that will get me to those goals and to into this person I want to be. So like, uh, you know, most full moons, I'll do like a little full moon ritual or, you know, like I'll just like sit down and write down what I'm my goals are and who I want to be, the things I want to let go of. And then I'll just actively work at those things every day until the goal is accomplished. So I'm never not seeing the goal. The goal is there, but it's not like my main focus to like, okay, I have to do this right now and I got to shoot there. Like, no, baby girl, you got things you got to do in the middle to even get there. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's do those things in the middle. Focus on those things. And that's going to happen anyway. Wow. Beautifully said. We asked all our guests that question. And you just, you just, you might, you might have said it the best <laughs> out of everybody. Okay. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. No, but we, but we love, love that and love the person that you are and the woman that you are and the artist. Like, oh my goodness, interlude. People definitely have to check this out. This was such a great conversation with you. Thank really you. Really
Well, thank you for having me, boo. Anytime. Look, I told you I was going to reach out. <laughs> you did, and we and we got it done. I told you we was going to get it done. Mm -hmm. And we got it done quick. I was like, come quickly. Listen, yeah, we're not playing no games. We're not playing no games. I see your team. Uh, it's so amazing. Like, they're amazing at what they do. How important, e even before we tell people where to, you know, download and stream the project and where to follow you on socials, how important is it to have a good team that believes in your artistry, that is attention to detail, that is attentive, and that is very on it? It's the, probably the most important thing beside music and visuals, honestly, because you can have music all day, but if you don't have a team to help you push it or, st or stand behind you, fight for you in these big rooms, it's kind of hard to make things go. You know what I mean? A team is a, a very big asset to an artist because no artist gets where they need to get on their own. And a lot of it has to do with their team and having a good team of people you believe in who represent you well when you're not around is an amazing thing and very rare to find. Definitely good. So find a good team, people. Find a good team. <laughs> do your due diligence. Date the niggas before you go, <laughs> before you get married. You you do you and, and go. Don't you date before you get married? Don't just be signing with people. Uh -huh. You better date. Speaking of marriage, I'm trying to get married this year. You know what I'm saying? Come on, married this year. Come on. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that for you. Yeah, look, I've been I've been speaking engagement over my life this year, so we gonna we gonna see. We gonna, see. we gonna see. I might have a song for that coming out soon. You know, whatever. You know, something to be all the dance to at y'all wedding or whatever. Oh, okay. I'll we'll see. You. So for oh, you didn't took the tissue. Don't don't tear up now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, where can people follow you? Like as far as like your social media is concerned, or where can they download and stream this incredible project? As a matter of fact, they gotta download the the whole catalog. You got to download the whole catalog. You got to listen from top to bottom. You got to just start at the beginning and come on up. Um, you can find me at I am Azian, I A M A S I A H N. That is all my social media. And just type in Azian on any of your streaming services, and I will be there. Google Works, Amazon, Deezer, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, iTunes. I mean, <laughs> I'm there. Everywhere now. Meet me there. YouTube, YouTube music, because there's two of them, you know. Come, find me. Let's yeah. <laughs> keep going. All right, you guys, and that is our show for this evening. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Listen, we had a great chat with Ajian and Titus. We also talked entertainment news, and we had our Dear Dwayne segment with our longtime supporter, Kiana. Shout outs to her, Ajian, and Titus for being a part of tonight's show. And shout out to you guys for tuning in tonight as well, too. Like I told y'all, this was going to be a great show. And I'm so excited that you guys were able to tune in, whether you are tuned in live right now in this very moment or if you are tuned in after the fact. Thank y'all for tuning in. Listen, next week is going to be so dope because we got Blue Kimball and Lecrae with us. Yes, y'all, I said Lecrae and Blue Kimball on next week's show. And listen, as the weeks go on and on and on and on and on, the hottest of the hottest interviews are dropping. So I need y'all to tell a friend that 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday night right here on Air with David Dwayne. And not only that, we got our IG Live series popping as well too. We do that every Monday and Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got a lot of content flowing and going, y'all. I be, I be stumbling upon my words. But make sure that y'all tune in. I cannot wait for next week. Lecrae and Blue Kimball. Oh, my gosh. And then we got some dope stuff with our IG Live series and stuff like that next week. And maybe even later this week. So you got to stay tuned. Keep following at David Dwayne on Instagram. And for all things On Air with David Dwayne, make sure that you are following at On Air with David across all socials. And um, stay tuned. You guys have a blessed evening. We'll get you guys next week. Later.